Hello everyone, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. And today we're gonna to be looking at a viewer question all about high speed signaling and EMI and EMC in high layer count PCBs. Now we've talked about this in the past on four layer and six layer PCBs because those are kind of the entry level for high layer count PCBs. Of course, you have to do those layer stacks before you get to higher layer counts, but we're gonna be looking at eight layers and I'll show an example that goes up to 12 layers in this video. First, we're gonna take a look at some layer stacks and how we assign layers in these higher layer count PCBs. And then we'll look at an example inside Altium Designer. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we start looking at some layer stacks and looking at an example, let's take a look at that viewer question. Tin the Win writes, Hi Zach, really appreciate the knowledge you share. Wish you all the best with your future knowledge sharing. Hope in the future you will talk about EMI and EMC and high speed signaling for six through eight layers in PCB design. Well, I'm happy to talk about EMI and EMC and high speed signaling in six to eight layer PCBs. Now I will say we have looked at six layer PCBs in the past because we wanted to answer the question, what do you do with those two internal layers, especially when you have a high speed PCB? So let's take a look at eight layer stack ups and how the stack up design process could extend into 10 layers and 12 layers. And then we'll look at an example in all designer on the computer. So let's head over to the whiteboard and get started. So I've said in many webinars and videos, a lot of your very simple EMC problems start with an improperly designed stack up. So I think it's important to, of course, know how to correctly design a stack up for any layer count. Now, since this question deals with eight layer PCBs or even higher layer count PCBs, We'll start with six layers, then we'll go to eight layers, and we'll see what pattern emerges for stack up design in order to get to these higher layer counts such that we can support high speed signaling as well as ensure that we pass EMC. So of course we have our top layer, that's gonna be our component layer, and then we'll have our bottom layer here. And then when we go to a four layer board, we generally bring in a ground plane, just like this. We'll call this ground, we'll also call this ground, Call this top sig and then we'll call this bottom sig so this is your four layer board you generally have thin dielectrics on the outside and then you have a thick core layer and then of course once we go to six layers we'll bring in these two internal layers it'll look something like this normally we bring in those two internal layers to have signal and then we have this other layer that we try to decide what to do with now in a lot of designs that aren't dealing with, like for example, large FPGAs or large application processors, this might also be signal. But generally with high speed design, we actually want to set this to power. And the reason is that a lot of digital components, especially large processors, have to run with multiple voltage rails at different voltages. And so you can have a dedicated power layer just for all of those signals and voltages. What happens if we then take this to an eight layer board? Well, when we add in those next two layers, we're gonna have something just like this. Now we have a signal layer here and it's already referenced to ground. Now, if we wanna block the signal layer from having any influence on something that's up here on this layer, we would also want to make this ground. Now, what happens with this layer? Well, this layer could also be ground because then you would have your power stuck between two different ground layers. But typically what happens is this becomes a signal layer. So now we can see the pattern that arises here when we go to eight layers. And then of course we could copy and paste each of these layer pairs onto higher layers, okay? So we have signal, ground, something else, then signal, then ground, signal, then ground. Signal and ground are always paired together. Now this power layer, how do we deal with this power layer? because here we have signals routing around in this layer. And this power layer could be running with multiple voltages on different rails. And so you're gonna have some splits in this power layer. And that's natural for any of the designs that I've shown in the past that operate on six layers, in particular like our ethernet switch design, which I'll show in an upcoming video. And I've shown some examples of a variant of that design in an earlier video. Also, if you watch our video about EMC on six layer stack ups, you'll see that I've basically done the same thing. We have one layer that's dedicated for power. It's split up into multiple rails. We have a signal layer next to it, but that signal layer is also next to a ground plane. 
Now, what might also happen in these higher layer count boards is instead of just having signal here, you might have signal as well as power mixed in on this layer. Now, this is something that might be necessary for high speed design. The reason is that you could require a lot of current as you start to scale this up to high layer counts. And so you may need to have multiple power layers and those multiple power layers may need to run at multiple voltages. So you could have splits in those power layers. So you could also have something like this on these internal layers. Now, when we have these splits in the power layer and we have signals running around nearby, what's the potential problem? Well, the potential problem is that there could be some radiated emissions whenever a signal on this layer here, layer four, crosses a split between two power rails on the power layer here, on layer three. When we put ground here, it helps to suppress those radiated emissions. And it does that by minimizing the impedance discontinuity that a signal on this layer would see as it crosses a split on this layer for layer three. Now we've done a video about this in the past where we looked at the S parameters for traces that cross over the split on this power layer. So make sure to check out the link in the description to watch that video. Now these types of splits may be unavoidable in some parts of the stack up, but if you look throughout the rest of the stack up, you see that we generally have signal and then ground, signal and then ground. So we don't have those same kinds of risks of radiated emissions from these other layers. Now that handles the radiated emissions side of things. Now, what about impedance? Well, that's the other reason that we have this alternating signal and ground type of arrangement when we scale up to eight layers or higher number of layers. When we have these signal layers paired up with a ground plane like you can see here, we have a very easy way to define impedance. Here we would just be using microstrip. Same thing on the bottom layer. This would also be microstrip impedance. And then here on these inner layers, we would have strip line. We'll just abbreviate it SL. Here we would also have strip lines. And then here we have to decide if these are gonna be controlled impedance lines or if we may wanna dedicate one of these layers to some of our lower speed signals or configuration signals. Well, I think here, in order to minimize the possibility of having a radiated emissions problem, it makes most sense to put your faster or your higher edge rate signals here on layer six. That way they're stuck between two ground planes. You're not routing over any splits like you see here in this power layer. So that's gonna minimize the risk of radiated emissions from those splits. You could then put your lower speed or your lower edge rate signals here on layer four. One thing you can also do here on layer four is you can actually fill in with copper pour. If you fill this in with copper pour, you're gonna be doing two things. First thing you're gonna be doing is balancing all the copper on layer five, because you can see here layer five is a uniform ground plane. And here on layer four, if we just have some drawn out power rails and some signal, there's gonna be a decent amount of empty space. We can fill all that in by adding in some ground pours. So that balances the stack up. The other thing that it does is it ensures the electromagnetic field and particularly the electric field couples more strongly to ground just by placing that ground around those strip lines. Now you need to be careful here because of course, if you put the ground too close to the strip lines, you could get an impedance deviation and the strip lines don't meet the target impedance that you're trying to hit when you design them for this stack up. Something else that we can do in this type of layer arrangement is with the top or the bottom layers, we could have RF or analog signals as well. So for example, if we have, let's say an antenna or a feed line going to an antenna, we could put our RF stuff here on the top layer. Putting the RF stuff here on the top layer is going to ensure that it is, it is sufficiently shielded from all of the other digital signals on all these other layers. So what does all this look like in a real layout? Well, let's hop into Altium Designer. We're gonna take a look at a 12 layer board that basically takes this same type of layer arrangement pattern and scales it up from eight layers to 12 layers. The board we're gonna look at also includes some of the elements that you can see here on the board. So let's go ahead and check it out. So here I am inside Altium Designer and I have a 12 layer board that I brought up here. And what I wanna do is focus on which layers contain the high speed signals that require impedance control. And then we can look at the layer arrangement and see how all of this affects EMC. So first, as I start to scroll through the layers, you can start to see here what the layer arrangements are. So starting from the top, of course, we have our component layer. We have some ground on the top as well as some small power rails. And then as we go to layer two, we have ground. And then we start to see the alternating ground and power or ground and signal type of arrangement in the layers. Layer three here is a lot of power rails. Of course, if you click through here, you can start to see that, for example, this is the DC in rail. Here we have a 1.8 volt rail. 
Here we have a 1.2 volt rail, so on and so forth. Layer four also ground, although we do have a few signals here that are interleaved around these ground regions. And then here in layer five, that's where we have our first layer where we have a lot of high speed with controlled impedance. And those of you who are familiar with DDR routing, you can probably make out what this section is right here. This section is our DDR routing section. And you can see here, if I zoom in, you have all of these single-ended traces that are length matched. Here you can see we have the differential clock. And then here we have some other differential pairs, part of a different interface going to a camera on this board. Same thing if we go to layer seven. Layer seven also has DDR as well as some high-speed signals going to a connector. And then we have ground separating them on layer six. Layer eight also ground as well as some power rails. And then of course we showed in a different video that routing over these splits in these rails might create a problem with reflection once you get up to really high bandwidths. Now, of course we're dealing with lower bandwidth signals. So we know that in this particular design, not such a big problem, but in some designs it could be a problem. And it's one of those things that you wanna simulate or check in measurement. And then here, once we get to layer nine, we have some more signals interleaved here as well as ground. Here, layer 10, we do have some differential pairs here that have the same impedance as those other layers. Again, also you can see that right here in this section routing into our BGA. And then 11 is ground, and then 12 is of course our other component layer. So where are the EMC risks in this particular design? Well, as I showed here as we scroll through the layers, most of these high-speed signals are routed next to a uniform ground layer. I would say really the big risk here in this design is right here on layer eight. Layer eight does have these splits and the split does occur near this region where you have these controlled impedance traces. And so if we just turn off all of our layers, turn back on seven and eight, you'll be able to see here, if we go ahead and turn on our copper layers. You can see here where some of those splits arise. So you do have these traces coming out here, routing over these split voltage rails, routing back over ground, routing over some splits again, and then routing up here to this connector. So as I mentioned earlier, how big of an issue is this going to be? Well, we've shown in another video and others have shown in simulation that if you route these traces over this split in a strip line configuration, if you have the ground on the other side of these traces, so in this case, ground on layer six, that helps to reduce radiated emissions. Now there may be some edgy radiated emissions. What matters here is the size of this split. And then what also matters is the channel bandwidth because you really have two things going on here. You could of course have some radiated emissions, but that split does create an impedance discontinuity. And that impedance discontinuity could create some reflection as you route across that split. So whether that reflection occurs within the signal range or within the frequency range that your receiver needs to detect that signal power, so the channel bandwidth, that's going to impact whether or not that interface will be able to recover the digital data. So in this case, we're dealing with lower data rates, we're dealing with lower edge rates. Now, technically the signal power does extend out to infinity. And so that's why these splits can be responsible for some radiated emission, which might be observable from the edge. Now I can tell you that this particular design was tested and has passed EMC. So we do know for sure that these splits are not a major problem. And that is because of the ground that is on layer six. Now, do we have any other layers where we see this same type of thing happening? Well, let's go ahead and turn on layer five because that had our other DDR interface and then the corresponding ground for that was on layer four. You can see here on layer five that we've done a good job of making sure that all of those traces are surrounded by ground on both sides. So we really have uniform strip lines being routed without any splits in the corresponding reference plane, except for right here in this region where we have a couple of overlapping traces. I would probably go back and change these in the next revision if we really had to. Of course, I think in this particular design for the reasons I mentioned earlier, it ended up really not mattering. And as I mentioned, this design has gone through EMC testing and it's been shown that this design does work successfully. Now there's another potential EMC issue, which I hinted at here in the segment on the whiteboard. And that is when you have overlapping power layers, which could also be switching at very high rates. We have that here on layer nine and layer 10. So if I turn off five and six, 
and I switch into single layer mode and just kind of switch between these two layers, you can already see where that overlap is occurring. Here we have a small 1v2 rail. And then if I go ahead and switch here to the next layer, you can see right here we have this larger five volt rail. So it's worth asking, is this overlap between these two rails going to be an issue? In this case, it ended up not being an issue when this design was running, didn't have an radiated emissions failure, so that's good. But in some cases, overlapping power planes that are switching with respect to each other, meaning that they both are drawing in pulses of current at high rates or at fast edge rate, they could oscillate with respect to each other and that changing voltage or that changing electric field between them can then be responsible for radiated emissions. So it's all about the rate at which they're switching and then it's also all about the area over which they overlap. And as you can see here, it's a reasonably small area, so there is not much overlap. I think the ideal case would be to maybe take this smaller rail that you see highlighted, maybe move it southwest here in the design or get it onto a different layer if you have to. Now, with this being a 12 layer board, we're already up to 12 layers and we didn't wanna to go to 14 layers when we did this. So we kept it at 12 and then accepted the risk going forward. But one of the reasons that of course this doesn't fail is because there is ground surrounding everything on layer nine, as you can see here when I switch back over to this layer. When we look here, we see a whole bunch of ground surrounding everything. And this ground also helps suppress any radiated emissions that might result from these overlapping planes switching at different voltages or switching at fast edge rates. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. And Tin Nguyen, I hope this video answered your request to your liking. Of course, if you have any other questions, you can contact me on LinkedIn or you can leave your comments and questions in the comments section as always. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to call your fabricator folks. We'll see you next time.